Alright, yo, 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 what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby. Representing Team Kings of Games, and uh, today I'm going to be showcasing you guys some dual replays with shutoffs and plunder patrols. Uh, these are two of my favorite decks right now. I think they have a lot more potential that has been tapped into, and uh, they're definitely sleeper decks that I feel are only going to get better. Um, one of them fell from grace. One of them I feel is like still not done receiving its support, but they're both in their own respect very very strong decks that can be played as an aggressive kind of otk and or combo eccentric deck you can also play the mid-range which i feel is like where it's at for both plunder and shutoffs because both these decks can otk you out of nowhere and they can combo off because these both these decks can utilize cards like needle fiber and o-lion uh, making one card combos you know since just basically being able to build a board off one card and they can really generate a lot of advantage go critical mass out of nowhere but where I feel like where it's at to play both of these strategies, you want to pilot them in the mid range, kind of like that. That's that's really the pace or the tempo you want to go for between plunder and shadows. You can make them both combo decks. Like I said, they can even be played a super like I, I guess low tempo control decks where you can play a lot more back row and a lot more hand traps because their resource game is very strong. It's comparable to Salman Greats and Sky Strikers. Because both these decks have their own forms of recursion and they also just generate a lot of advantage over the course of turns after turn after turn especially with shadows i think this is one of the stronger i think it's probably stronger than plunders just for the mid-range play style that it has that's why i love about it um because you could just constantly keep building your advantage make sure all your cards replace themselves you have some of the strongest tools in the game winda is just insane you guys uh you have so many ways to foolish burial your cards so many floating graveyard effects your boards can be basically interchangeable amongst the format and also the matchup the same can be said about plunders but i think plunders still they're not done you know receiving their support so this is not nowhere set in stone how good this deck is right now but i think these decks respectively at least deserve to be considered tier two so i'll start i'll start with actually shadows first i'll go shadows um versus adam Spaders, then i'll do like dd i didn't get a lot because uh the, especially with shadows it takes a long time to duel like these replays are going to be fast forwarded but it takes a long time because i have so many chain links going off and so much critical decision making uh where you kind of just like and you have timers sometimes like one of these games i lost to the timer like this game against galaxy eyes i lost it to the timer uh but anyways let's go ahead and get into shadows versus the adam emancipator game one pause so his opening hand this dude is playing a really like rank 4 heavy um, at Emancipator build and he actually plays hand traps. He's not only playing hand traps but he's also playing back rows which I mean back row removal so I feel like this dude is not really concerned about the dice roll whether he goes first or second. I think that's how he built his deck where he didn't really care what the dice roll said. This just these two cards in hand alone even though these look like bricks. This can be utilized to resolve his effect, whether he misses or not. You can still synchro with both of these into the level 6 wrap type and use its effect. So you have two chances. If you whiff on him, that sucks, but you still have a wind and grave for the disruption effect of the level 6 synchro. And he has twin, he has Nibiru, and he has Ghost Ogre. So his hand is like, he has three ways to interact with me on my turn and on his turn, because Ghost Ogre and twin work respectively on either. Nibiru too, but not really, you don't really use it like that most of the time. And then he has two ways to set his combo off. So his hand, even though it looks bricky, is kind of optimal. Now my opening hand, I just have some RNG that I have to I have to make some RNG happen for this hand to be complete. I have the most important thing that I need to draw is at least a Shadal or two. And the next thing that I need to fish for is a fusion spell. So I have two chances at that. So you guys are gonna see how this plays out. Play. So what I do first is I actually go for secrets. So I go for secrets to do the spellbook engine first because I don't want to activate a lore and draw into anything that I would search off of the secrets or the blue boy because then it's just like, it's a dead draw to me because I was going to see it off of secrets. So I went secrets first to get the blue boy and the knowledge out my deck so I can allure after. So I'm deck thinning the correct way. So press play. Then I go blue boy. I notice he has ogre so that's, it. I think the um, game, I guess the, uh, the simulator kept asking him did he want an ogre and I'm glad that he didn't because i was absolutely not correct now if he ogre the blue boy that would put me in a weird situation where basically uh the knowledge could have been dead 
but I feel like holding the ogre for something more impactful um, did him justice on his end. I think he just had something better playing with it. But ogre could have also interrupted the spellbook play. So basically, the cards that after I searched knowledge, the cards that I saw off of knowledge would have basically been the cards that I saw off of Valor. If he ghost over the blue boy, I would have still got the knowledge, which means these two still would have been on top of my deck after I got shuffled. So when I allure, I still see a fusion spell. I just have a dead knowledge in hand, but it's not dead because as you see, I have a secrets. So basically that would have been used next turn. But anyways, continuing. I allure, I see an extra copy of beast. So I get rid of the beast and I'm still fishing. So I'll check my grave. I polyed using trick clown and um, hedgehog. So I'm still fishing for what I need. I don't have full combo, but I have enough to set up for Winda and um, basically main phase three shenanigans. I call it main phase three because I can play on my opponent's turn. That's how I like to play shit alls. That's how plunders operate too. That's why I like both these decks, how they operate because they play a lot on your opponent's turn. They have a lot of good recursion. And like I said, they can OTK you out of nowhere um they also don't really need too much for their engine to get started typically it's going to be one to two cards which should also you know it's going first it's normally going to be three cards but going second um and also with interchangeable cards it could be one to two like if you're playing jet synchron and o-lion and you know needle fiber you could get your engine started off one card basically but anyways continuing i go construct obviously i chain block here chain link one construct chain link two hedgehog chain link three uh trick clown so continuing, I search out Squamata. Whenever I search out a dog, I don't have Squamata in my hand yet. I always search Squamata because he's the best at all in my opinion. I would never play less than three no matter how many cards were in my deck. As you guys see, this is my 60 card shit alls that I love. Um, so I went basically, I'm still going RNG. So I went fishing. Um, so I searched my Squamata and what I did was one of my favorite plays in shit alls. I summon Cross Sheep and leave it on my field. So what I did was I used Construct to dump El Shadal Fusion from my deck to my grave. Then I linked in the Cross Sheep to use the Construct to target the L, get it back. So I set up to play on my opponent's turn with Cross Sheep and L. If you guys see my shit all content, I feel like a lot of people have at this point. Some people only sub to me just for shit alls. Uh, you guys know how I play this deck. I don't go full combo if I don't have to. It's one of those things where the deck can combo off. Like you really can because I could have kept going if I wanted to or changed my line of play to use the El Shadal Fusion the same turn I added it. But I decided to just play the way I normally play, which is to play mid-range. I try to stretch my resources as far as they can go for me so I can get the most out of each individual card. And that's how you want to play Shadals because they have so much recursion that when you get so much out of one card and then you recur it again, you're plussing at that point. So Cross Sheep's going to get linked into and I'm going to use the Construct to target the L, add it to my hand and set it. So pause. He doesn't have a way to stop Winda in his hand. He doesn't. And once hit, Winda hits the field, that Nibiru can potentially be dead. So you guys are going to see how this play out. Play. He normally the secret, he activates his effect. I immediately chain El Shadal Fusion because that puts him in a pinch where now he either, you can see it's optional. If you do, you can special. So it puts him in a pinch where he's either just going to uh, look at the cards, put them on the bottom because he can't even, um, basically he can't special summon after. So he can look at them, put them on the bottom and choose to not special summon or he can just resolve seeker and special summon. If you guys see, he has a reborn in hand. So this is what gets kind of weird. So I'm going to play it out, but I chain L so I can make my uh, window. And I use Ariel and Squamata. Now, um, let me make sure that was Ariel and Squamata. My bad, I use Beast and Squamata. So you should see I'm still fishing. Beast and Squamata are going to set me up for next turn. Now, something I did notice was he did have the Reborn in hand. So I felt like he should have just used the Reborn to get my Construct to attack over my window. Now, would that have allowed him to combo off? No, because he would have had to basically sacrifice Seeker from resolving a special. And his inning board would be Seeker with Construct. But also, once he outs my window, main phase 2, he can make needle fiber with this being a tuner. He would give me some value because Contra gives me a card back, but at least he could set up some kind of a board to disrupt me. But he chose to take his own route, which that's, you know, it's his day. So he summoned Guardian, and then I have Chain Link 1, Squamata, Chain Link 2, Beast, Chain Link 3, Cross Sheep. The reason why I put Cross Sheep as Chain Link 3 is because I knew it was going to be attacked over anyways. So I figured I'm really not going to get what I need out of Cross Sheep. I've already basically served his purpose. So I wanted Beast and Squamata to be protected so I can be able to play for my next turn. So he basically goes over in my Cross Sheep, which I was like, okay, that's fine. It kind of made sense, but he didn't have to do that. So I go, I draw to damage juggler. I use Squamata to send Shadal Core 
to add my L bat so I can keep playing on my turn. And the card he sets is Twin Twister, and then he passes. So if you guys notice, the only rock in his hand is an Abiru. So this is another very unfortunate thing for him that he had to give me information that was really nice for me as his opponent is nice for me to have that information but it sucks for him because he didn't have any other rock to keep his guardian life but once he showed me that nibiru you guys that's when i decided to keep my window on field because nibiru cannot resolve all windows on the field so after that i changed my entire line of play after he showed me nibiru he made me change the way i played so if he didn't show me that nibiru i probably would have been more reckless but he showed me that the beer. So I played it safe. I kept window on field. You'll see. So I normal dragon and I just go for damage. I go attack, attack, and I go in battle because the thing in my mind that I'm thinking is this back row is an infinite impermanence, perhaps, possibly, or something that can be used on wind. It could be a lost wind. It could be imper. It could be anything, you know. So what I wanted to do was basically in battle phase fuse into construct. And then send the dragon so I could pop the back row so I don't have to worry about it. Whether it's a bluff or not, I just didn't want it to be on my mind. And I knew everything I was doing was safe from the Nibiru because I kept window on the field. So continuing the play, uh, chain link one, chain link two, chain link two to pop, chain link one to the hedgehog so I can keep fueling my hand, make sure I keep my advantage up. I swing for 28. I put him on a one turn clock now because I already have lethal on board. And then as you see, I set the secrets as a bluff. I resolve my damage juggler that I sent and I search my trick line. I set the secrets as a bluff to make him think I have another Elsadol fusion to see if he's going to play around it or not. And so now he kind of has full combo if he would have had more earths in his grave because what he finally does is what I wanted him to do in the first place is he goes reborn on my construct which I felt like he should have done and he's able this can make Galen Granite which can basically search block dragon. The only problem is he doesn't have three earths in grave. So that's just really, really unfortunate for him. But I don't necessarily agree with his build. I feel like he's playing too many rank four turbo cards because he even plays um, Goblinburg. I think he's trying way too hard to get into Gallant Granite and that card is just icing on the cake. It shouldn't be something that you change that much of your deck building just to get to that card, but it's to each his own. So he gets my construct. And then he attacks my window. Obviously, the mandatory destruction doesn't kill her because of her attack. Then he proceeds to just normal damage count, kills my window. I add my L back, of course. And then he makes Dugaris. So I think when he made Dugaris, what he should have done was reborn his Seeker. He should have specialed his Seeker from Grave. Because even if Seeker misses, this and the Seeker can be made into a Needle Fiber nonetheless. But he decided to just play it all to chance. He took a big gamble. So he drew into two amazing cards, by the way. So his gamble paid off, but it wasn't guaranteed. I still, being him, I would have just reborn the Seeker because that's a guaranteed play. But his RNG was amazing, as you see. This was so good, he said, forget Nibiru. I don't need it no more. I got the, both my Analyzer and Researcher, but he didn't get another turn. So I'm going to press play. I basically was just able to ulti cam. I had L. What I wanted to do is keep L no matter what in my hand so that I can ulti cam and battle phase. So as you guys see, the play I did... I use Windy to summon the dragon from my deck because the line of play that I'm trying to do, what I have in my mind, is to use Incarnation's Graveyard Effect to flip this to put my Construct back in my extra deck so I have a third Construct for any kind of situation that it will call for so I just keep that Construct. So it was kind of big brain but also at the same time I needed it out my way anyways. I didn't want to summon, I thought, you know, also I could summon Op Cologne to negate her but I'm still negging too much because then my Construct crashes. I will not crash as my contract kills a contract. I lose out on damage and then I'm wasting resources just to get what get over my contract that belongs to me. You know, he took it with reborn. So I decided to just save a little bit of my resources and just take this line of play to just use the dragon's flip effect to return her to my extra deck, which also gave me another follow up just in case I needed it. So I searched off of my juggler, I searched for hat tricker. And then I put Lethal on board after this, so this is going to be game. I bounce my Contra back, I special have Trigger, and I normal summon Squamata. And notice everything I did, because I saw he discarded the Beirut, I figured maybe he has another one. So everything I did was under 5 summons. Uh, Fusion summon was 1, Special was 2, Special was 3, Normal summon was 4. I did it all under 5 summons, and my 5th summon was going to be in battle phase, and the Beirut can't activate in battle phase. So everything I did was safe, and I knew I had game. So that's game 1. And then game two, he made me go first. He sided super heavy for going second. Didn't even see any of his second going second cards. I saw him off of his um 
his Adamans, like his Evenly and stuff, his Lightning Storm and Evenly match. So he decided to side super heavy for going second and make me go second. And I drew an amazing hand, honestly, I really did. So I'm gonna press play. But before I do, you see his opening hand. Uh, he drew his one of kind of a brick. Instant Fuse is not necessarily a brick, depending on the target you play, because that could be a combo piece itself. Again, he's just trying too hard with the Gallant Granite, and he already has block in hand. So this hand, weird as it may be. It can turn into something just a monstrosity depending on how he puts his cards to work in combination with each other. And as you see, my hand is just great. I have L, I have Math Man, I have full combo basically if you look at it. Because even if I miss out on one of my meals, the get the hedgehog's gonna get me what I need. I have core, I have patchwork, I just have everything that I need. So I'm gonna press play. I play my hand out. I normal the math man first, try to bait the ash, because I don't want this to get ash. I send the damage, get my uh trip on. I go patchwork for edge and chain and poly, and I use poly first. If you have poly and L in your hand, you always should activate poly first. I know some people might want to be greedy and just be like, oh, I'm going to get it back. Don't play into a DD Crow if you don't have to, and also at the same time, keep the L in your hand so that they don't know that you have it. If you play it first and you add it back, they know that you have L, so now they're playing around it, but since I went poly first and I didn't use the L, he didn't know what it could have or should have been. He just has to pretend and act like he knows. So now he's playing around blinks that could be bluffs. So, but anyways, so Trick Clown. I, obviously, I went Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, Chain Link 3. Chain Link 1 on Construct, 2 on Hedgehog, 3 on Trick Clown. I'm just comboing off now. Uh, but I didn't go ahead to combo because I'm also playing on a beard. Notice everything I did. Uh, normal summon one, special two, special three, special four. I still played around Nibiru and got my full setup because I used Construct to send Incarnation from deck to grave, linked her off in a cross sheet and got my Incarnation to hand. And I passed playing under Nibiru, around Nibiru. Everything I did was under four summons. I have my favorite three back rows in this deck. I say this in all my profiles Cross Sheep, Construct, I'm sorry, Cross Sheep. Incarnation, Core, and L. Normally with the Link 2 cross Construct and Grave, but I didn't want to play into Nibiru territory, so I didn't go full combo like, you know, I could have went further. Because remember, this could have been activated, but I did not want him to know that I had it. So I have like the three best back rows in this deck. Uh, it's just, this setup is amazing. So play. He opens his Seeker. So what I do is I go Main Phase 3 on his standby. I go Incarnation Special Construct to cross sheep zone so I could chain block more and I'm just milking my cards like like literally just like a cow I'm milking my cards getting the most I could get out of them so that's why I was telling you guys about how I play shit alls I play mid range but I can combo off if I need to I only combo off if it's a desperate situation where I feel like my board uh, this end board right here it can summon window multiple times but if this wind is not enough then I have to go dweller especially against Eldritch you have to summon dweller turn one because you don't want to lose to their back rows the grind game and golden lord being able to send a window is fine but being able to special himself from grave to attack over your next windows hurt so sometimes you can't play mid range but this is my preferred comfort zone I only get out of my comfort zone when I have to do it so I'm chain blocking and what I'm basically doing is I'm actually setting up to OTK him next turn I use construct to send shit all fusion i know i'm gonna add it back because i'm gonna fuse with her so what i have planned because what he's doing doesn't really matter he doesn't have an out to my window so he's gonna lose basically because he can't play um so what i do here obviously i chain l to his goblinberg's effect to special because now that he's special summoning once l resolves backward wind is up he can't special summon anymore so he's locked for the whole turn and what I also do is I chain core to my L. So what my plan is to fuse using core and the construct to get both my fusion spells back to my hand. So this is like all this that I'm doing that I'm telling you guys, this is how I play shit off. I always set up for my next turn. I give myself the main phase three. That's why I like mid range. If I combo off, I use more resources than I prefer to. And then it's harder for me to recover because I have to rely on the graveyard effects of one fusion monster, like one window or one construct. And that's a major grind game. I don't want to play into if I don't have to. So I'm literally giving myself free, basically like free real estate, and I'm putting window on the board at the same time. So I'm gonna press play, chain core, summon it. You want to chain core because if you uh, basically go core first and then L, when it resolves backward, the core will be up and you'll use your one special for window. So by chaining core, it goes up first, then when it hits the field, I can still special summon at least one time if I want to. And so, as you see, everything resolves Construct and Core, get me both my fusion spells back to hand. So, this is free real estate, this should all fusion. I did this on purpose. I knew, well, I felt confident that if he evenlies, you know, if he dark rollers, if he does anything, I have another turn. 
and wind is not easy to deal with so what I did was excuse me I sent the shit off fusion because let's say he does have dark roller and he does out my board I still have shit off fusion and I have L shit off fusion which means I could at least bait one negate and then still try to OTK him off of one card so everything I did even though I was confident in my turn one board you guys always want to give yourself a backup plan so that's what I did I gave myself a backup plan to make sure no matter what happens that I have a play to make no matter what that's why I don't like playing combo too much with shit offs because you put too many eggs in that basket and if your opponent has the out that you are trying to play around or they just happen to draw multiples of it then you just lose Lose for no reason just for being a little bit too greedy so I'm gonna press play and I got like everything that I needed so as you guys can see he right Geki in my hedgehog I searched for I think it was windy because I already had Skamada and Winda stays so I'm still gonna play a little bit conservative I'm not gonna leave my window I'm not gonna link it off I'm gonna keep window up I summon op cologne uh, once I get Aqualone up, I have my two good floaters up here. So Aqualone, whenever something happens to it, I can fetch from Decker Green to the third. So I can make sure that I always get the two spells or traps that I need back. I set my L, so if he outs Winda, I can just do it again. And as you guys see, I did not chain El Shadal Fusion to his, um, to his instant fusion. That was a slight misplay. I should have, because let's say he summoned, um, Thousand Eyes Restrict. And then target my wind it. Yeah, now I can chain El Shadal Fusion, but he still gets one special summon, which could make a difference. Because look at that block dragon's in his hand. Now, you don't have the herbs yet, but that could have been trouble for me. So I'm going to press play. He targets Op Cologne. I chain Fusion. Now, I was pressing no, thinking that it was windy, forgetting my wind is on the field, so I can't use windy anyways. So I pressed no on the effect of Op Cologne. That was an accident by me. I should have pressed yes, so I can grab one of my fusion spells or. For example, one of my favorite plays off Aqualone is to do this. Grab Core from Grave to Hand, discard Core, and add one of your fusion spells from Grave to Hand. So that's what I like to do so you make Aqualone free. You keep the same cards you already had in your hand. Uh, so press play. And I have a game, so I keep it very simple. I already know I have lethal. I'm not going to do anything flashy. I'm not going to link these off, get any fusion spells. I just normal summon Squamata and just go straight into battle phase just get the game over. I don't want to extend it any longer than I have to. So that's game. Uh, now I'll go Shadals versus uh, DDDs. So... I got to go first, but this is one of the nightmares of a Shadal player when you don't open a fusion spell, but you open a bunch of dolls. This is the nightmare of this deck. It's something that you can build your deck correctly and it can still happen. You can play too many fusion spells, then you run into the more, I feel like the problem that's way worse than this one when you draw too many fusion spells and not enough dolls. Because at least with dolls, they're actually reactive if you set them, they have flip effects. When you open a bunch of shit off fusions and polys and no dolls in your hand, that's even worse. I'd rather open a bunch of dolls than a bunch of fusion spells. But this is the nightmare of the deck. This is something you just hope never happens to you. I'm up against DDDs. He's playing like pure DDDs. He's playing like pendulum cards and everything. So his deck's different. Uh, I'm not really going to be able to explain too much on his end because I'm not a DDD expert. I know to an extent how the deck works. It's farming and it recurs from the grave a lot. But he just went flip out for damage. So I feel like, yeah, you know, like he could have had game on board potentially, I think, because he doesn't know my hand. So like, for example, I don't know if he was playing around a beer, which was smart if he was, but he just went straight for damage. So because he went straight for damage and put it, did not put a negate up first, he let my Wendy resolve, which was trouble for him because now I can just kill him. So you guys are going to see this is what happens when Wendy resolves, just, by, just Wendy resolving. So if you have no dolls in your hand, when he resolves to summon a hedgehog, your opponent has an extra egg monster up. These could have been all fusion spells and this one Wendy been the only doll in my hand and I still could have had game because if he doesn't negate shit off fusion or anything that comes after it, I can just destroy his whole board. So I summon hedgehog obviously because I need to get to my fusion spells. So I summon hedgehog off Wendy and whether he attacks into it or not, I'm going to flip it, but he attacks into it. I use damage juggler. 
so I use damage juggler to cut this because I already did 2k now he's about to do 28 piercing I don't want to be in that close in the danger zone already because 28 deducted from uh, 6k basically that was gonna put me at um I think 32 so that was just too much trouble for me and then one of his cards worked when I had like 4,000 or less light points it was this card right here he's like uh-uh so I just damage juggler just to chunk some of the damage off and made sure that my hedgehog was basically free real estate uh, so now he goes into Gilgamesh um I, I really don't understand DDDs that much but if you guys know DDDs, you guys know what he's doing. He's just doing his thing. I know this is a foolish. I know this summons from Grave. I know this can also banish. Um, I know what Slime, Lamia, and um, Swirl, Necro, and Lamia do. Oh my goodness. So my hand gets even better. I top deck Recycling Plant. And this was free real estate too. <laughs> I'm using that word so much, you guys. You guys are probably going to get annoyed. Uh, this, I used it to chunk block. Now, I have a free discard potentially for the Fusion Recycling Plant. What I instead choose to go for is Hat Tricker. I do that so I can put Shikinaga up on board. Um, this card has some weird effect that like activates in his special summon. So I just want to put Shikinaga because it's like a really strong effect too. And the other thing too is the Shadow Fusion is going to get me my clown anyway. So I just went for the other four mage. I activate uh, Recycling Plant, Sin Chain. Its effect does not miss timing. So I get another plus. Just it's crazy. Everything's paying for itself right now. I go for Shikinaga first. And then after that, I make my optimal play. So I, of course, drag in the pop this because this searches every turn. I don't want that. So I get rid of that first. And then I focused on going. So what I did first, I took care of his follow up play. And then the next thing I decided to do was go after his skills. So I'm doing a standard should all combo. I don't really have to explain this. This is the aerial cross sheep combo. Everybody that plays should all for at least a couple months should notice by now. You can chain block a lot with this combo too. So it plays around hand traps to an extent. I go into my Link 2 construct, which is amazing. We're going into another construct. I'm also, if you guys see, I'm fueling my hand so that no matter what happens this turn, I can still play on his turn too. So I get my two favorite back rolls, L and Reincarnation. As you guys see, I play multiple incarnations. I feel like at this point you have to. I was that dude that was playing three of this when it first came out. Because this card, I just always saw the um, potential in it. And what I like to do in my shit all combos is I like to use one for its graveyard effect. Then I use another construct to dump it and add it so I can have it plus this for follow-ups. Because you can use this to summon construct on your opponent's turn and snowball. Just that, you can loop this off of construct. Summon her, get an effect. And then they kill Construct, get it back. So that this is like your grind game right here too. So I just really like keeping this card. I went to Access Code. I went to um, go after his scales. So what I'm doing before I try to go for um, any battle or try to go for game, because I'm not sure if I have game yet, but I kill all his follow-ups. As you guys can see, I kill all the follow-ups. I neglect on this link too. I think I read it but forgot that I wouldn't be able to negate it with Shecky if I kill it and it goes to grave, but I cleared his scales and it's continuous, so now, even if I can't break his board completely, I can leave him with the weakest monster, and he's playing in a really awkward situation, because I have Shecky and Winda, and I can summon more on his turn, so I'm just good. I'll uh, press play. So, I go straight after that. I didn't realize he could do this, so he summons this Armageddon dude. So I have to use our um, access code to attack over it, and then I go L. So why do I go L in battle phase? Because I'm like, oh snap. I didn't read this card that it can be destroyed by battle, but I'm like, oh snap. This card can turn off card effects in the hand or the graveyard. So this is like an abyss dweller. So I'm like, no, I don't want him to have that on my turn because that could just be a problem for me. But I did not know it couldn't be destroyed by battle. It's like I read some of his effects, but skimmed through it. That was my fault. That was a misplay. So I went L in battle phase using my window because I'm going to get L back off of it to try to attack into this to leave him with Leonidas. But I left them with both because I didn't read cards. That's a mistake a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players make. We don't read. So set, set. Uh, Fusion Recycling Plant just keeps giving me resources back. So I can still play. So I'm good. One thing, um, I should have set it to always chain. Because if I set this to always chain, I could have, for example, went Incarnation to summon Construct on his draw phase to use Construct to send Ariel and banish his slime from his graveyard and banish the rest of his good DDDs. So now he's working on this weird card and that other monster he had on his field and his top deck. And I still have Winda and I still have Shecky. So that would have been a better situation. But anyways. I negated that monster with Shecky because that monster, that's what I was worried about, the Zero King. And um, on in phase, 
so um he negates this with Genghis and I forget like this is one thing that I did not do that I should have done better with him I should have read more of his cards but I was so much more concerned on what I was doing that I didn't read more of his cards because I didn't realize this could negate on his turn you know it's so when I went in phase incarnation he negated it does it change the game state no not really because I already have lethal on board I was just being a little bit greedy with this I just wanted to get more but I still have L, and I still have Shadal Fusion. That's why it really didn't change anything. So I went Shadal Fusion, I summoned Construct, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get me some more cards in my hand to make sure I can keep playing. I think I went after his back row, I'm not sure. No, I didn't go after his back row, my bad. So one thing that I um could have or should have done is basically, I could have just used Access Cold Talker on itself to pop the back row. Because if you add this up, this was still enough. This was 70, uh, what was this, 54? 7,600 damage. Something else is I turned off my L in battle phase because I special summoned with Winda up. So when he defense drawed, I couldn't go L because I already summoned once. So he saved himself for a turn. Fusion Recycling Plant, but he surrenders. I think he just saw I just have way too much on him. That's why with playing mid-range Shadals, you can out-resource even decks like Salmon Grades, especially them, because the tools you have are detrimental to their playstyle. Aerial destroys Salmon Grades. They need their Grave to play, and they need a special summon more than once. So Winda and Noe Shadal Aerial alone are the best tools to recur and use the most against um, Salmon Grades. So this deck, you can stretch it to a really, really long game if you need to. So that's game uh, one game two i think game two ended kind of swift too because he did some weird plays but he didn't end on any of the things, so this is weird to me so i'm just watching him play you know he, he's playing solitaire right now because i'm not doing anything i traps i'm just doing all gas uh so he goes into another gilgamesh this is weird so he does all this it does not end on any interruptions so at this point I feel like maybe I'm not playing the best DDD build once I realize what he's doing because I'm like I know this deck can put up negates I know for certain that this deck can put up Titanic Galaxy Siegfried Crystal Wing it can summon <laughs> like um it could synchro summon on your turn it could use needle fiber he's doing like pure DDD pendulum so this is just different you know but respect him for playing his deck correctly I'm not correctly for playing it pure uh, but I tried it in Dark Ruler and Evenly because I was just like, Dark Ruler Evenly is going to clash the whole board. But I didn't even end up needing the Dark Ruler, so I just hold it so I can go for damage. As you guys see, <clears throat> I'm doing the same stuff I always do. I'm just fueling my hand, giving myself follow-ups. I'm doing the standard combo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go cross and Baby Construct into Axis Code Talker, which is one of my new plays I like to do going second. So I use this first. So I... Before I make the access code, I feel so much in my hand, it's ridiculous. So I go into another construct, I'm chain blocking. I'm getting so much pluses right now, you guys. I'm still keeping five cards in hand, so basically it's like all this costing me one card because I have six, but now I have six cards in hand again, so everything I'm doing is free. So I'm really, really plus with this shit all right now, you guys. So I didn't go off to the scales. Um, I was just, I think I was overconfident in this one, but I should have just went after the scales, honestly, you guys. So I, I sent the Falco. The reason why I sent the Falco is because I wanted to be able to summon Op Cologne. And also that gives me Winda as well. Because I, these two are light attributes and I don't have any more dolls. So Falco was that extender that I really needed to use in case I wanted it on my turn. So you guys will see how it plays out. I'm trying to his board. He summons this dude that can't be destroyed by battle again. This time I go Op Cologne to negate it. So I can kill it. And I add back my L. So no matter what happens, whether I can OTK or not. I have the two best back rows in my deck for my um, resource game. I have Fusion Recycling Plant. So no matter how this plays out, I'm staying in the game for a long time, you guys. So I'm just make, making my deck really hard to beat right now. I went Aerial, what I should have done in the first place. Banish the Slime. What'd you say, babe? He ripped the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, we could tape it back. And then I summon wind on him, as you guys can see. So, I'm kind of like, this is it, you guys. I don't really have to... Like, there's not much that he can do. So, as you guys see, I'm just like... I have full control. He's, he, um... When it says Lost Connecting, they just left. So, I'll go to a Plunder game real quick. Plunder Patrol versus Pendulums. So, when I'm playing Plunders, whenever... I'm gonna swap around to me. Whenever I see multiple fusion spells, I get really happy. Because now I know... 
not only is this going to bait a negation, but it's going to get me an emblem on the follow-up. So this card can potentially bait two negates by itself. It's not once per turn on activation. So as soon as I see I'm playing Pendulums, I'm like, yeah, I still feel like I can wax him because I have two fusion spells. <laughs> Which means, excuse me, both these can be negated and I can use the graveyard effect of one of them to get emblem and use emblems effect and then still put out another ship. And I, you see, I have three of like... <laughs> three good pilots in my hand so i have a really good hand with plunders for me a really good hand with plunders is with plunder cards not hand traps not generic cards not ash blossoms you know just plunders this is how i like this deck i know some people have different opinions on how to play plunders but if you guys see what i do with plunders see my content see how much i like this deck and how much i've learned of it and i know how this deck works it works best with its own cards so i'm gonna press play and not every deck's like that some decks the archetype specific cards cannot carry it. This is Pendulum, you guys. He's just he's just drawing way too much. He's RNG, and he keeps getting bad cards. So this just seems like uh, it seems like a build that he probably got online or something. Cause I see it's drawing a lot. So I'm like, okay, this looks like an RNG like Triff build kind of like an RNG. He just you know hope you get lucky with all your draw spells. But if you play 40, you know it's still consistent. Not knocking or anything. But he's RNGing a lot, and as I'm looking at his hand. He doesn't have any low scale still. This is why I like, uh, like, I play Pendulum's different, you guys, but he ends up seeing some good cards finally. So he saw a pin call. He discards the dead blue boy. Uh, th this is Pendulum's, you guys. So he has the potential to make a really, really good board, but we'll see what he does. I'm trying to remember how this plays out. So he makes that up. He makes Tornado. Oh, snap. You know what? I think what I think I realized. This dude wasted the potential of his hand after he finally got lucky off of his draw spells. And he decided to make a play that he I feel like he should have known that his scythe got summoned. Like, dude, you desired and you drew a scythe. If you're playing a second scythe, it's probably in the banished pile. So I think he was trying to go uh, to trigger the Dagda so that it can set a scythe and have the tornado to basically pop scythe on my turn but i feel like pendulums can do so much better than this and they can still lock you out of the game in a different way even if it's off the destruction sword or union carrier he just yeah it just it was sad so i just i flat out activate fusion and then he scoops so that replay was quick now this is game two he actually gets to go off but let me swap around i might not have that many good plunder cards in my hand but I do have a Kaiju, a Nibiru, and an Impermanence. So this hand just is like, it's capable, you guys. Like, I, this this is waxing like any combo deck. Imperm, Nibiru. All you have to do is just hold these now. You don't even have to wait till they hit five summons. You just hold these until you see the most like devastating board that they can make. And before they try to end their main phase, you just say before you end your main phase, Imperm, Nibiru. Even if it's an FTK deck, like, I feel like this just waxes the ftk so my hand's super strong because i have shipyard to get into my engine and i have desires to rng plus the random card i'm drawing so i'm just really confident so he's going off he's doing our more rng stuff uh he goes alliance for pin call pin call discarding the dead desires he has his scales complete now he goes chrono so now he can pin summon he searches Indy off of Abductor, so there's an Indy up, but the Abductor has one spell counter, so Indy can actually interact. But one thing I will say, pause, pause. The the Abductor had a spell counter. The Abductor had a spell counter, so if Indy stayed on the board, when I tried to Nibiru him, he could have negated the Imperm with the Endymion, but. He just went straight for Vortex, and I still didn't Nibiru. Don't chain Nibiru to Absolute. Wait till Vortex hits the field, and then that's exactly what I did. Because if I you chain Nibiru to Absolute, it resolves backward, and then Absolute comes after the Nibiru resolves, which is crazy. So I reveal Nibiru, he chains Vortex, I chain Imperm targeting it, and that waxes his whole board, you guys. Very unfortunate. But he chains Dagda to set his Scythe. I'm definitely not going to pop that Scythe, though. So I get a fat Nibiru, and he surrenders. So that's... That just really wasn't very reactive. It's unfortunate. Uh, next up, I'm going to go Plunder versus... Oh, Grin Manji went all the way to game three. So this is Plunder Patrol versus Grin Manji. So with Plunder Patrols, you guys, once you get Shipyard up, your deck becomes very aggressive because your follow-ups turn into OTK super quick because your ships start to look like Borosaur Dragons and Access Code Talkers. Like, they're reaching super huge heights for attack statistics 
and also because this deck's so reactive and it doesn't need that many cards to get like to get its engine going it can play through interruptions as long as you have the impactful cards left like for example you can play through so many interruptions and just follow up by normal summoning her linking her off and then special summon her back, link her into Almirage, into the Blackbeard, and that can still get you there. Even if you're an opponent, negated the other four cards in your hand. So I like this deck. It's very strong. It's not as strong as Shadal's. I will say I think Shadal's are way stronger because I just know what these decks can do. And what this deck does at its best and what Shadal's do at their best, Shadal's can really dominate this deck at certain times but i will say respectively that this is a really strong deck and it's not to say that it, it's really like it's not that far behind shadows but i do think shadows are stronger this deck's really really nice though so i'm going to continue playing uh so i have shipyard i discard um golden hair because having her engraved now i'm set up and what i also can do is fish for my salvage to be live so i can just pitch this reborn the golden hair and now i have live plays so you guys are going to see how this plays out so i go foolish for Whitebeard, and then I salvage for the Whitebeard and the Golden Hair. You guys are gonna see why. I haven't even normal summoned yet. So when I play this deck, you guys, <laughs> excuse me, the best plunder cards to keep in my hand are always gonna be Whitebeard and Shipping. Those, that's just how I play this deck. If I have discard fodder, it's gonna be Whitebeard, Shipping, and if not, Shipyard, because these cards replace themselves. Golden Hair replaces herself, but she requires for you to lose more cards from your hand to do that. These cards replace themselves when they're used. So you can just use Shipyard to bounce something to set it back to keep plunder cards in your hand. That's something I do a lot with this build spell. I use Ship Shipping to equip White Beards to my plunders and activate Fool's Barrel Goods to dump this and bounce the White Beard back to my hand to set this and activate it. So why why did I do that, three stacks? Or if you guys are wondering why did I do that, uh, basically I searched the white beard and still foolish the white beard because I'm gonna use a white beard now and I'm gonna use another one on my opponent's turn. So play. And I have the two cards combo I need, link in the Almirage, pitch the white beard to bring back her, and then I do have red beard. I link these two in the black beard and I have what I need. I set the call by and I pass. I have one of the best corner cards in my hand. And so I chain, he goes uh Gizmek on Inface. I chain the Blackbeard targeting this, I get my draw and I put out Moark. Once you realize you're playing Manju, put that Moark on the board because Manju can smack you out of nowhere. So you want to be able to banish the Manju. Lice cannot negate no continuous Manju. So now this call by is just kind of dead, you guys. So you guys are going to see how it plays. So play. He Dark Lord no more as me. He runs like he's my field. He can't pick Cyclones my call by the grave. And then he just attacks for 2450. What do I have to say about my opponent doing all this? I don't think he had to do all of that right now. These were some haymakers that he had in his hand. He could have held these haymakers for when it was most impactful. The only thing that he had to do, really, how I feel, was if he was really that scared of Moark and he just really needed Gizmek that bad, he could have just kaiju the Moark, for example if you wanted to redbeard sure redbeard can tag into a morph that's absolutely fine but also keep in mind he has the super poly so i feel like if you're going to be wasting cards in your hand you could have just used the kaiju i don't know like this is reactive this is a game changer this is a game changer these are all haymakers this could have been used on my turn against the field spell so he threw three cards in his hand away to destroy three cards on my field but i still have them up in hand advantage so i just feel like what he did was just really it was hasty haste makes waste so i'm gonna press play he has the super poly face down though, so it's looking nice. I top deck the desires, I'm feeling nice. I got my plus one, I just white for golden again. I'm doing the same thing. Now I synchro into Braun, because I'm just trying to get his back row out the way. So I banish it. It's a super poly. Now, if I didn't get rid of it, the next time I summon more, he could have super poly me and who knows what would have happened then. So I feel like I made the right play by going into Moor because also get me a search for the, the other white beard. I didn't banish it off desire. So now I have another white beard. As you guys see, I'm always going for white beard because after you resolve any effects off white beard, you're going to put red on field. Also, if your opponent dark ruler no more is you, you could still discard for cost off your ships and then resolve this engrave and put a red beard that's not under dark ruler and put a fresh ship on your board so that's another way that i play around dark ruler no more with this deck so i prioritize white beard i'm giving you guys inside on high play uh shit alls and Thunders, so i just went for battle and then i set booty i'm good he has a kaiju and a grim manju so this could have been ugly for me but this is again where more just comes so clutch you guys so i just you know i make this dark 
I went into morph off of red, and I banished that module. I'm like, that's not happening, bro. And then the white beard's gonna resolve, and he surrenders. Then I go to game two. He definitely got game two because I see it went to game three. So we'll see how this plays out. I Terra into shipping. I mean, sorry, shipyard. And then I resolve desire. So my hand's really nice. Obviously, I'm gonna get rid of that dead desires. I don't need it anymore. I go for white like I always do. I equip emblem to him. You guys see that he has an imperm, right? So even if I didn't resolve it right now, because honestly, if he imperms this, if people don't read these cards correctly, they will shotgun imperm on him. And he could chain his effect if they don't read. But duly, to duly note, if I left the emblem on the white beard, I would have played around imperm in a better way. In the sense that when I use his effect, he can't chain imperm to it. But if he reads my black beard correctly and I activate it and he chains imperm, black beard will be negated. And I have to rely on booty now. I still have a good uh, plunder patrol card in my hand. Like I said, this white beard and the field spell are what I like to discard because they just get. They get they basically replace themselves golden hair does not replace herself she requires more cards to be able to get her back out but these will give you more resources just for being in the grave so yeah i'm gonna press play though he does not have yet he does hide you you know my black beard which i'm like dang then he cosmic cyclones my field spell he allures he has d fissure which just destroys my deck so it's like dude and he doesn't have a monster up, so I can't even use booty. So I'm just like, dang, I gotta hit you with your kaiju and pass. He top decks Lightning Storm. I mean, this guy just... <sighs> and then he has an 8400 Manju. I'm like, okay, I can activate booty. Nope. Imperm. Game. Right here. Game. Dude, this Imperm, like, got him game. Booty was gonna get white, right? And then I'm like, oh, I can just go into Moork. You know, I can discard this, I can banish it, I can take control of the game. He's like, nah, bro, I'm banishing every card from my deck because I'm killing you this turn with my 11,000 plus uh, Manju, which he does. He beats me that same turn. Smack, 8,800, game. So that's that, and then Plunder versus... Oh yeah, Manju, game three. There we go. So this one, look at my hand. I side the lightning storm because I'm like, okay, this guy's gonna, he's gonna side like floodgates or something, you know, he has super polys, he has cosmic cyclones, you know, the lightning storm is more for his back rows and his monsters, because I feel like he's not putting up oppressive boards turn one, I think he's using back rows, and as you see, he has the worst, like one of the worst floodgates against his deck, since everything's fiends, including your extra deck, this puts you in like a really, really bad pickle, where it's like, you can't summon anything else, so if I didn't side that lightning storm and make him go first, because I made that choice, I lost, so I choose who goes first, it probably would have been like went differently so i'm gonna press play I, I lightning storm obviously he goes there can only be one now even though i have the storm which he does surrender i think he just sees like the writings on the wall i did have a hand that was like wow i got field spell <laughs> like just my hand's amazing but i feel like you should hold there can you there can be only one until your opponent has two or more of the same type so you flip it and make them lose their board so it's he just kind of shotgunned it and then he surrendered um and then for shadal versus galaxy eyes okay let me exit and go back in there whoops this is the game where i actually i actually lost this one to the timer so it, it's just very unfortunate how this played out my hand was great though so if you guys see this is probably gonna be the last one because it's um pushing a timer for me um so I went into my spellbook play. I went blue boy. Um, I'm just basically, I'm trying to RNG to better dolls because I have a fusion and I have two dolls so I know I can play. I go poly. Now that I see L, I'm not going to activate it because when I see this in my hand and I have another fusion outlet like I told you guys, I keep this in hand because I don't want them to know I have it. I want them to either basically, um, like obviously a good player might just play around it whether they know or not, but I don't want them to get free information that they don't have to. So I want them to kind of recklessly play into this. But what I do is I summon Op Cologne, and this is where it gets interesting because my hand's kind of weak. So I need Wendy to resolve to keep my tempo up. So what I do here is I chain block with Op Cologne to target itself to make it chain link two and chain link one Wendy. So by doing that, I'm playing around Ash Blossom because Op Cologne can negate any face of card on the field. You guys should pay more attention to that. This card can negate itself, its effect on its field. So you can chain block. That's why this deck is just so strong, you guys, because it chain blocks so much. And you can still get his grave effect. So I linked it in the gravity controller. I grab my incarnation and then I discard my extra Wendy. Because I just want Math Man and I want L. 
and I want my trap. So I'm set up. He activates Wizard to make it a level 8. And then he activates Expedition. That's what I was waiting for. I'm like, yes, it's my moment. So I just fuse into um, the window, and it's like, boom, you're done. Because you're summoning a defense, so you can't even swing over my girl. We're just safe. Hedgehog. I'm just searching for Squamata. That's the best doll. If you don't have, if you already have Squamata, you just want to go for Windy. He goes in phase. So this hand might not look like much, but I ended up cutting up so much. Oh, another thing is I should have put it on Always Chain because the game didn't let me go in phase incarnation, which I wanted to do in phase incarnation to basically um, special summon a face down Windy or the Op Cologne, which would have been amazing either one, but the game did not let me. So I should have pressed Always Chain instead of Normal Chain. But anyways. I ended up cutting so much, like, dude, I was just so confident. I got rid of my window. I was like, nope, I don't need it right now. And I just went ham. You guys see, I'm just plussing right now. I'm using the construct. I didn't even need fusion. I just drew all the pieces, you guys. Just my hand came together so nicely for the follow-ups. So it was like, my hand seemed weak starting off. And honestly, oh, that's his top deck. Honestly, Winda just bought me that one turn. And this is where mid range becomes super duper effective because I stunned my opponent out for one turn. I didn't start off aggressive, but I start getting aggressive later on in the duel. Instead of just flat out starting like a pendulum player just going aggressive from the jump, you know, right out the door, just swinging. But that's not always going to be good for you. So press and play. I'm just going ham, you guys. I send core. I'm like, dude, I'm getting everything. I special summon beast. I don't even need it. Then I go incarnation to summon um, off cologne to negate that. So I can just run into it. And I'm just like, dude, this is it. This is game. This is game. 43, 28, 19. Your timer's up. And I'm like, dang. Just use this. Banish cross sheep. Pop. 43, 28, 19. I'm just doing too much, you guys. That's where you just know you're, you're just doing too much. Yeah, the deck was cutting up. But as you guys see... If you guys notice, as I was playing, you notice how I play Shadals. Even when I'm going for a game, I'm still setting up for next turn. You know when your opponent's confident that they have an OTK, so they just commit everything. I did not commit everything. I made sure, look it, I have my resources right here. These are my follow-ups. L and Incarnation. So no matter what happens, if he Nibiru's me, if he hand trapped me, if it just didn't go out, like he had Battle Fader for some reason, no matter what. Even though I have game, you guys see this is game on board, this is a good lesson to learn as a, just a Yu-Gi-Oh player in general. No matter what, even if you have game, make sure that you can play for another turn. So that's what I did. And I think I'm going to end the video right there. Um, and I'm going to say a quick prayer. Um, I didn't get to get to all of them. We still didn't get to Lairs and Teller Knights, but this video is just so long now. I still have Zephyr duels to show you and more Dark Magician duels. You guys see I grinded a lot with Dark Magician, but... Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, you guys, deuces is wild, yo. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was, I feel like shadal has got a lot more time than Plunders, but you know what? Plunders are going to get more love, too. But you guys saw I did go kind of crazy with Plunders. I did, like, six videos for Plunders in, like, a week. And some people just wasn't happy about that. But I'm like, you know, it's cool. Hey, I like Plunders. It is, it's kind of my channel, you know. So at the end of the day, the content I make is more, like, it's informative for you guys. But also, I make content that I like, too. I don't just always do what everybody else likes. I also make content that I like. But peace out, you guys.